Hello everybody, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix. I've done a talk before on my kind of philosophy in life and needing nothing and appreciating everything. You know, just kind of a minimal, minimalistic standpoint and appreciating that, you know, you've got your health, that you've got your security, all the basic essentials, and then, you know, anything else besides that is really just luxury, and which is all good. But the idea is if you're getting by, appreciate that because there are people in other parts of the world that aren't so fortunate and uh, they would appreciate just, just decent living standards, you know, what we consider average and what we take for granted. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. And just like every video or talking video I do, I don't actually formulate generally the, the, the ideas that I'm going to talk about or the points or even the conclusion. I just think of a, a subject and then I just start talking. So it's kind of an exploration for me to see where I wind up and how I feel and think about things. And um, I thought, you know, since I've done the whole needing nothing, appreciating everything, I thought I should go to the other side of the fence and touch on taking things for granted. You know, just because you've got your bare essentials, it doesn't mean that you should not appreciate anything more that, that you have in life, you know, that you're fortunate enough to gain and I think it's good to appreciate anything you have more than nothing you know more than your bare essentials instead of taking it for granted and like I said it's it's relative really if you're going to a part of the world where people are in famine and they don't have basic basic health care you know and it's just poverty all around you know them coming over here even being a homeless person on the street of Perth Western Australia they will feel a lot more privileged a lot more healthy, a lot better, more better off, and to them it might be considered a luxury in contrast to the awful living conditions that they are subjected to where they come from. So it's really relative, and you know, to that person they might, they could then say, well don't take for granted just our baseline way of living, you know, and it is really a baseline for us, all of these things, if you've got a house and you've got food coming in, you know, and enough to, to keep a nice belly on you, you know, you never see your ribs showing, you know, and, and all of that, then, you know, you might, that you, we consider that baseline, and generally, it doesn't really make us that happy, what we find happiness in is, uh, you know, sophisticated pursuits of all kinds, whether it be relationships, whether it be uh, financially, career, you know, or various uh, objectives and uh, projects and whatever whether it just be working on the self, which is all good and well, all of that stuff. But I think, you know, when you, when you start questing forwards and you start looking forwards to the next step, to the next big thing, instead of appreciating, appreciating what you've got in your hand, you keep looking beyond your hand, beyond what's in your grasp, and you, you keep longing for and wanting and envisioning and contemplating what is available for you to grasp, or what, what, what better things you can grasp next. When you get into that way of living and becoming too future oriented and always thinking what's what's the next step, what's the next gain, it, it doesn't really matter even if you end up gaining that thing that you're that you're looking at, because by the time you've gained it, you're already looking at the next thing. And I find people doing this, even in relationships. So they'll, they'll really want someone, and then when they finally attain that person's attention, you know, or even devotion. Sometimes they'll just get over it really quickly and, and realize that it's a lot more boring now and they start looking at the next thing that's outside their grasp. And yeah, it's a bit of forbidden fruit, yeah? And it's a bit of wanting what you don't have. And that's what I think when it comes to taking things for granted versus a really appreciating and wanting and desiring things, valuing things. You know, you might value something when you don't have it because it's over there and you're like, I want it, I want it to be mine, you know, because it's not yours yet. And then once it's, it's yours and its availability, you know, is taken and you've, you've conquered, you've achieved, accomplished what you're going for, suddenly it becomes on par with everything else and it's kind of like average. And I guess that's what it's about when it comes to taking things for granted versus valuing is all about the rule of scarcity as well which ties in with the whole forbidden fruit complex, always wanting what isn't yours, you know? 
forbidden fruits more so wanting what's, what is someone else's, you know, like the little child who, if you pick up the ball that, that she's playing with, or, but yeah, if she's playing in a pen with other toys and you pick up a, a totally different toy she's not playing with, generally, and this is a psychological testing, generally she'll kick up a stink and start crying and saying, gimme, gimme, I want, I want the toy you just removed. Even if she wasn't even looking at it before and was totally unaware of it, once she sees somebody else taking it, somebody else having it, suddenly that urge to want it herself and take it for herself gains a lot more weight and momentum. So there is a, a thing of that, of wanting what others have, wanting what we can't have, you know, so doing things just to spite people, saying, you can't do this, you're not allowed to do this. You know, there's reasons why people break law sometimes, and sometimes it's just for the sake of it. It, it provides a certain kick for some people. So, um, yeah, I think it really it, it comes down to that, the forbidden fruit and the rule of scarcity, which is that when something is in abundance, its value increases, and when it's not so much in abundance, its availability is low, and it's scarce, um, then its value goes up. So when it's in abundance, its value goes down. When it's scarce, its value goes up. You know, because there's not so much going around. If you have uh, a collector's edition amount of stamps, right, and there's only a hundred of these stamps printed in the world, you can probably sell those stamps for a lot more money than something which has over five billion prints over time. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a, the availability. What, what's the what's the what's the big you know hoo ha? What's the value of having one of five hundred million or of billion five billion stamps if you can have one of a hundred? You know, there's a lot more value in that perceptively. And that's what I mean when it comes to stuff like that. You know, it's understandable that we will value something simply because it's part of a rarer set, you know, and it's not so available. And it's kind of special to be able to say, hey, I have one of these things, you know, like, isn't, aren't I cool? And that's cool. But when we start applying the same kind of logic to more essential things in life, deeper things, beyond just collecting things out of novelty, out of a hobby, you know, something just showy, when we start applying it to relationships, you know, and, you know, things that we need to make us happy, essentially, on a deeper level and fulfill our spiritual needs and wants, emotional needs and wants, physical needs and wants, you know, a lot of the time, we do ourselves, we don't do ourselves a favor by always questing for the next rarer thing, the thing that's in scarcity, you know, the thing that is someone else's, the thing that isn't ours yet. And this can create a lot of despair, a lot of boredom, depression, frustration, anger in people, even anxiety. Because instead of being where they are now and looking at what they've got in its entirety, they look to that next thing. Always thinking more, more, more. And you can you can only wonder why this is this is so the case. I mean the kind of world we live in at the moment. You know, it's no longer a community, but it's an economy. And it's a sneaky name, the economy. You think it's about, you know, the earth and the ecosystem. It's not even about that. Economy is basically the capital system, the flow of goods and services, products, you know, distribution, creation, uh, consumption. And that is our lifestyle. It's become a religion and a ritual, and people seek spiritual satisfaction through this ritual of buying goods at an ever accelerating rate and then burning up those goods at an ever accelerating rate you know and that's why I think it's contributed a lot to not being content with what we've just bought or what we just what we have now it's always the next edition of the iPhone or the, the next upgraded app or you know whatever so in this kind of system we live in where it's all about pace and it's all about style you know the next best looking and and sparkly and shiny and you know really impressive uh, design or you know just the next best thing if you look at their technology uh, of computers and you realize the curve they're exponentially creating better and better 
um, hardware and software to the point where it doesn't take long at all, it's a matter of weeks for previous hardware and software to become obsolete. You know? And this whole entire same thing of obsolescence being kind of built into everything is, is part of the big issue here. So, no wonder, even in our relationships, we tend to expect a lot of pace, a lot of style, a lot of excitement, a lot of things being really impressive at every turn. And then when it stops and fails to impress us and loses its novelty, we get old of it, get sick of it, and we move on to the next best thing, the next thing on the shelf, the next thing with a higher price, the next thing in, in more scarcity or that someone else's. You know, not just relationships, but it applies there too. Because it's part of our very way of life that has been designed, distributed, and regulated and defended um, over the, over a very long time now. We're pretty much born onto it. You have children being born onto iPad screens, breathing in this way of life, and it becomes, you know the norm you know it seems that's the, the hegemony is this is how this is the only way reality can be and this is the way reality should be it should be about doing your eight to five or whatever every nine to five job and then on the weekend going out and offering yourself consumer therapy and even numbing and relieving the pain and the stress with a few drinks out in a bar somewhere socializing and mingling you know for those two days just making up for that long hard week of doing things you don't really want to be doing you know and then we're trying to cram in as much compensatory fun times on the weekend to make up for it and that seems to be the, the, the basic way of life that everyone accepts and takes for granted as being normal and this is the thing like taking things for granted it isn't just about having a lot of good things in your life and overlooking them and wanting more and always longing and feeling depressed about things you don't have when you could be happy about things you do have. It's not even about that. It's also about what we accept as normal. What we accept is just the way things are and we don't really give thought to why they are the, things, why they are the way they are, how they become the way they are and how they remain. How are they maintained, you know, the way everything is? We don't really think about that. We just see the package and we think, oh, there it is. We just see the world, you know, the way, the way it is. And we think that's it. And we take it, you know, for whatever it's worth at the time. Without really stepping back and thinking, you know, in this case, what more could there be? <laughs> so I guess there's two sides to the coin of taking things for granted. You can take the good things you have in life are granted and long for more and that's worse for you or you can take the bad things in life for granted and not long for more not look to the next best thing at the moment in our hand we've got this way of life which in in many's opinion including my own isn't really the most balanced it doesn't cater to everyone equally or enough it benefits a few and uh a lot of the people that aren't really truly benefited from it, there are a lot of the people that are part of the expenditure list are so numb and brainwashed that they don't even realize it and they don't happily comply, but they comply. Whether it be out of fear or just passive acceptance that this is the way it is. So I think that's the thing we're taking things for granted. It's like a stopping point. And it's about wanting more. You know, it's a stopping point to accepting where you are now and it's it's a, the beginning point of moving on towards a future becoming future oriented so i guess all this this talk is leading to this question that why are we future oriented about all the things that we want all these new novel things as opposed to appreciating what we have and taking that for granted why are we future oriented materially and superficially when when it comes to the big picture and the, our way of life and everybody's health and our principles of where we're going and what we're doing to the world people aren't future oriented at all it seems 
not for the most part and, and people will rather satisfy their future oriented view and need for more materials for more excitement for more novelty at the expense of the future and any potential future views of a different world a healthy world it doesn't really make sense I think it's, things are a bit switched around I think we should stop taking all of this for granted and I'm not saying totally wipe the slate clean but I'm saying a social reform and make some drastically needed changes and there's, there's enough diagnosing identification of the issues at hand across the board that's not the, the issue here the issue is actually using that information to do something about it you Howdy. Food? Um, I got some food on me for my friend Have you? yeah you can help yourself no problem. So the issue is actually doing something about everything. I got some muffins for you. I got some really good food here. Let's give us a moment. All right. Got a nice roll with pork in it. This is all gourmet food. Pretty expensive. But after a certain time, it becomes completely free. So you can have it. Yeah, that should do, my friend. Would you like another muffin? Anyone? Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah, cool. you. Oh, no problem. You enjoy. The issue isn't a lack of information or a lack of evidence. Everyone can see the way everything is. But we just take for granted that that's the way it is because it's a convenience and it allows us the ignorance to continue wanting more at the expense of everything else. I think the one thing we really took for granted was our humanity. We just assume that it's just a, a thing that's given. That it's just there. When the reality is the longer we just take everything the way it is for granted, then the more we lose that humanity. Because it's not granted, it is something that is maintained. But these days it seems we're maintaining the wrong things and letting everything else slide. That's my food for thought.